which is, a, you know, I extended an olive branch to be her friend and then she took it and stabbed me in the back with it. Well, Jennifer, like I was saying, it's always so good to see you. Before we dive into this season, I know that you have been doing some really great work about um, in Turkey and raising money for earthquake and for victims and things like that. So please tell me all about it. Yes, as you know, February 6th, um, Turkey and Syria were hit with like massive earthquakes back to back. They even had one a week later. It's just a big and utter disaster over there. There are people who are homeless, displaced. So I created the NJ Relief Fund. It's www.njearthquakerelief.org in case anybody wants to make a monetary donation. 100% of everything that's collected is used to buy supplies for the victims. And right now what we're buying them is sleeping bags, blankets, tents, uh, propane heaters, and just non-perishable food. That's great. You know, so it's really, it's really important for people to continuously to make the donations. And it doesn't have to be a lot, you know, $50, $25, whatever you could do. You know, $10 gets them a sleeping bag, you know. So if we can get a, a few of those in, I'm happy to say that we raised over $30,000 so far. Thanks. which is great, but it's like not even enough to make a dent. I mean, there are millions of people who have been displaced in Turkey and in Syria. Children, children that are afraid to go to sleep at night because they don't know what the morning is going to bring. Um, facilities, their infrastructure is broken. The hospitals don't have employees to work there. And there are a lot of areas that still have not been tended to. So I'm actually um, going to meet with the Turkish consulate later this evening to see if there's anything that we can do to help accelerate donations. That's amazing. What's the website again? Just so it's www.njearthquakerelief.org. And you, you know, if you want to sponsor a tent, a tent is only $150. And I'm talking a substantial tent that has flooring that's weatherproof that an extended family can live in. It's not just like a little, like, oh, it's substantial. That's so great. you could put tent in the notifications, whatever you want, just any little bit helps, please. Oh. NJ Earthquake, Andy Cohen donated, Dolores and Teresa donated, like they've been so generous. I personally, of course, yes, I did donate for all those people <laughs> who are wondering, yes, yes, I did. And we will continue to donate, I will continue to donate, I will continue to collect and pay it forward because this is a very long journey ahead of them. Oh yeah, the, the pictures and everything. And you know, for me, it's like personal. Of course, I yeah. I speak Turkish, I'm from Turkey. Mm -hmm. The villages that have been destroyed are villages that my parents were born and raised in. You know, and it's, it's so sad to see. I have family in Istanbul, thankfully none of them have been affected, but they're also looking to me to be a voice and to do something about it. Yeah. Because they know of the, you know, somewhat celebrity status that I have here and they're so proud that I'm taking initiative to do something. And it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure when people look to you to be a voice and and to do something that's actually going to be a call to action, mm -hmm. which is what this is. It's a call to action. Yeah. Well, it's a great work that you're doing. It's going to take a long time to rebuild. So every little bit yeah. helps, definitely. Yeah. So how are, how are we feeling about this season overall thus far? I mean, I don't know about you, but I got my popcorn. I got my popcorn <laughs> for every episode. I want more. Mm. I want more episodes. I'm glad that when we get them, there are no commercials, but right. it feels like everything's being, there was so much that happened and it's like, we're just whizzing through. Right. We're just yeah. whizzing through. So I'm on pins and needles, like until I get my next episode. Totally. Like I mean, you know, it, last season, a lot focused on your relationship and you're still opening up the doors to let people in on what's going on with you and Bill uh, with your mm -hmm. therapy session and things like that. And you said that you're taking small ste steps to get back to the couple that you once were. Do you feel like you guys are there now? We are We are back and stronger than ever. I mean, I was saying the other day, or I was saying just before to somebody like, I feel like the love bubble has shifted. <laughs> we, have, we, we, have, we have taken the love bubble theory and we have made it our own. And honestly, that one therapy session was enough for Bill to basically acknowledge that He's got to participate more. And listen, for me, that is the key to a happy marriage. When both parties continuously participate to respect the other person's feelings and to keep trying to do whatever it takes to make it work. Mm -hmm. So as long as Bill and I keep working at it, we are committed to the commitment. You know, if I'm not leaving him over an infidelity, I'm definitely not leaving him over a little struggles that we're having 
for raising kids because I think anyone out there who has children mm -hmm. can attest to the stress the children can cause on a relationship. Oh, definitely. I mean, is he still spending uh, five hours in the pool house? Yeah, so I may have exaggerated <laughs> with that one. Uh, you know, I say hours because to me, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It feels like hours. But what you guys didn't see in that therapy session is, and what he spoke to me afterwards at home, home was like, listen, I am dealing with patients all day. And when I walk in the house, I know I have a wife, five kids, a grandpa, a this, everybody coming at me. Sometimes I just want a little time to unwind and simmer down. And I get that. I'll come home from the grocery store sometimes and I'll sit in the garage for just 20 minutes so I can get my emails and finish my phone calls without kids bombarding me the minute I walk in the door. And it's true. When Bill walks in the door, we all bombard him. And I tell him like, it's because we're happy to see you. It's because we've missed you all day. He goes, I get that. But like, sometimes I just, I have emails that I need to catch up on. I have people I need to call back and it's easier for me to go to the pool house where it's calm and there's not any kids running around because as you know, the house that nobody ever wants to leave, there's always like straggler kids around. I always love to have my kids' friends over, my mom's over, my brother's popping in, my other brother popping in, my sister pops in. It's like Grand Central Station. And sometimes he just wants like a few moments alone. And that sometimes could lead to an hour. Mm -hmm. And for me, it feels like hours. Cause like I'm waiting for him to come home so that he could tackle this stress along with me. Mm -hmm. But when he goes in there and I saw his car in the pool house, I will say that from now on, he'll always call me and he'll be like, babe, I just got home. I'm gonna go to the pool house for a little bit so I could just answer my emails and finish up some phone calls. And then now, if anything, I just go and meet him in the <laughs> and I And I don't even tell the kids. I tell the kids I'm going to shop, right? Cause if they know I'm in the pool house, they will come and they're coming to the pool house. Yeah, they will. <laughs> yeah, I see them running out barefoot with no socks, and I'm like, oh my god, I should have told them I was going out. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know it wasn't your, you know, you didn't come forward with the information about the infidelity, so it wasn't really yeah. your decision. But do you have any regrets putting your relationship issues out there on the show again, maybe this season, and you know, kind of comparing it to somebody like Robin on Potomac, mm -hmm. who kind of hid some relationship issues? Is that fair for housewives to do? Because since you're putting your life out there for everybody? Well, I will only speak for myself personally, and I think it's fair for me to own my, for lack of a better word, because when we sign up to do these shows, that's what we sign up for, to right. show the good, the bad, the ugly. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type where the uglier it is, the more I wanna show it so that people could see that they're not the only ones. The only reason, and I will say that with this infidelity, there was a time where when I joined the show, um, I thought about, hey, you know, this would be great storyline for me. And this is something that a lot of couples go through. And I'm so over it that I think I can tackle it. And then the other part, the mother in me, mm -hmm. who always trumps the other one, the mother in me is like, that is such a selfish thing to think. Mm -hmm. You would put an, an infidelity out there just so you have great storyline for the sake and, and hurt your kid's perception of their father. Like how selfish of that is it of me? No. So no. And it's, it wasn't just about me. You know, I have a partner whose secret ultimately it was, you know, this, this wasn't done to me. Like you outed my husband. Then I had to make a split decision to own it, which I was, I was going to do. I wasn't going to lie because I thought, honestly, I thought that Margaret had proof. I thought that Margaret had proof in her bag. I've seen her pull out proof before when we were filming on things. And having lived through the rumor mill the year before with Teresa bringing something to the table and not having proof, I thought, why would Margaret repeat the same thing and risk backlash unless she has some proof? So I was like, I'm either going to own my shit right now or be made to look like a liar. And that is one thing that I am not. If it's one thing I'm not, it's a liar. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will say it no matter how bad it is. I will own it. I will apologize if I need to and keep it moving. But no, I, it was never, I don't regret any of it. No. Yeah. Speaking of rumors that come up this season, it seems like, you know, this big rumor about Melissa possibly cheating on Joe this season. It seems like that kind of gets brought up. And I believe maybe you bring it to the table after hearing it from somebody else. So did you have proof that this happened? Did you believe that it oh. happened? I did not have proof that it happened. I 
don't know if it happened or not. I don't believe it. It's none of my business. Mm -hmm. The point of it was to prove how all of this derives from Margaret. Mm -hmm. That was really the only thing. Everybody knew, like Mar Margaret said, everybody knew what Laura had told us. Um, we were trying to keep it under wraps for as long as we could. And, you know, ultimately, you guys are going to see how it went down. And don't shoot the messenger here. This is not from me. This is from Laura saying that it's from Margaret. It's not like Teresa came in and said, oh, I had a rumor. I heard a rumor and there's no source. This was not that. This was, I heard something that someone is saying actually happened. And here the person is actually, it's Margaret. So, you know what? They should hash it out. Yeah. Do you feel like people are kind of seeing Margaret's true colors after all of this? Or did it really affect her at all? I mean, I don't even know about Margaret. I feel like if anything, this season, Teresa has been vindicated. Mm. I feel like everything that she's been trying not to say all of these years, people finally see why she wasn't saying anything for all these years. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was just happy to see Teresa's storyline kind of play out. And now everybody's seeing everything with different set of eyes, right? People are going back and seeing the old episodes and thinking like, wow, I would be pissed too if I was her. And like, ultimately, Teresa's just trying to be happy with her new fiance. Mm -hmm. So to me, the most exciting thing about this season is their wedding. Yeah. And me being bridesmaid. <laughs> you look beautiful. I mean, do you, you. Feel, do you feel like, I think you say it in this week's episode that Joe and Melissa do take every opportunity to make Teresa look bad. Do you still feel that? And even like looking back at old seasons, did you feel that as well? I mean, looking back on old seasons, I think it even more now than I did. Because mm -hmm. I will say, like, before, when I was a fan of the show, watching it with my babies at home, I used to see Teresa and Melissa, and I used to think, like, why is Teresa mad? Like, this is her family. I, I would want my sister-in-law on the show. Like, I didn't get it. And now I'm seeing it with a different set of eyes. And I'm like, oh, like, that, mm, maybe that, that was not so good. So, and I think, like, Melissa it's all about accountability you know if people own their sh you would be surprised at how far you can make a relationship work and mend as long as you're able to take accountability mm -hmm. if you're going to just sit there and say like well i didn't do anything wrong well then you know what you're never going to get anywhere right why do you think this season like because you see joe's being like teresa you're so mean um you know we're not unhappy like you kept us out of the family why do you feel like joe keeps kind of attacking Teresa in this way? Do you think it's because he wants a storyline? Do you think that's how he keeps himself interesting? What, what, why do you, what's his motivation behind all this, you think? I, I wasn't sure. I did notice that something must have happened because as you can remember in the beginning, it looked like Joe and Melissa loved Louie. Mm -hmm. I mean, Louie went even as far as to ask Joe for Teresa's hand in marriage. And for me, that is the utmost respect you can give someone. Mm -hmm. So I was always wondering, did something happen that caused this now sh like I don't like Louie? And I was confused as everybody else. And you guys are going to see it all play out on the show. Right. It, does, it, it seems like there me. is a reason. There is right. a reason why, why the shift happened. Right. And I think that's what it was. I don't think Joe's trying to have storyline. I think Joe is mad and angry and bothered about something. Mm -hmm. And um, or, or at least making up a reason to be mad about something mm -hmm. that he shouldn't be. Yeah, it seemed like maybe Louis maybe lost money with Joe Gorga's business. You know, that's you're going to see all of all of that unfold, which mm -hmm. is a great thing about our season this yeah. year. So you're going to see a lot of behind the scenes, whereas like in the before years, everybody was always so vague. It's like, wait, what happened? I think this is a great season because you're going to find out what actually happened. Right. You know, Melissa, Melissa did say recently that she wants to wants to be comfortable being in the same room as Teresa and Louis. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that change? And wh why do you think that change in Melissa? I have no idea. And I, I think it's best for me not to speak on Melissa's behalf. It's gotten me in trouble once or twice. And I'm really just trying to stay out of their relationship because I feel mm -hmm. that every time I say anything about their relationship, People misconstrue that as that I am the one that's instigating it all. Listen, they had problems way before I ever came on the scene. Okay. Their problems do not derive from me. Um, so I just choose to stay out of it. Being a friend. Until of reunion. All right. Yes. Do you, up. I have to ask you then, do you still think Joe's a bitch boy? Uh, honey, he's more than a bitch boy. He's a drama queen. <laughs>
<laughs> do you would you still want to see Joe and Melissa on the show next season? Um, listen, I don't make up the rules. We are an ensemble cast and we need a whole bunch of us for this ship to sail. Mm -hmm. So more power to them. As a friend of Teresa, do you think that she would still want to be in the same room as Melissa and Joe? Do you think that she listen, could do it? I can't speak on Teresa's behalf, but what I will say is Teresa is an OG on this show. Um, she's been there from the beginning and I don't know about you guys, but I'm interested to see what's coming next. Very interested. Uh, a lot of, it got a lot of people talking um, about Louie admitting that he sleeps in Teresa's dad's pajamas. What I was know, your reaction so to silly. that one? Okay, so, so backstory, backstory, Teresa was cleaning out Nono's clothes and they were a brand new pair of pajamas. And I've done the same thing where I was like, oh my God, these are so, these are brand new. These are great. You know, do you want them? And I think Louis was like, oh my God, they were meant for Nono's. Like, I would love them. I would love them as, you know, a part of Nono. And people are saying like, oh, if it was for Nono, it would have been shorter. Listen, pajamas, when you buy for men, are small, medium, large. That's it. Small, medium, large. Nono was a large. I think a large will fit Louis. I don't think he needs to roll up that waist. And I do think in Louis' defense, when he was saying that to Joe, we have to, un we have to understand the premise of all of this. Louis has been doing nothing but trying to be the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. He went over there trying to fix it for his fiance, for the love of his life, trying to make this family something that they can be together. And the things that he was saying was, was just so that Joe could see how much he loves Teresa mm -hmm. and how much he cares. I understand that seeing it the way that it was presented in that context, it probably came off as a little strange to people. But when you know Louis, you could see like, He's just trying to keep the peace. Mm -hmm. Like he's almost trying to tell Joe, like, you know how much I love your sister? And you know how much, like, this is the things that I do. He's not looking to creep him out. Mm -hmm. He's almost trying to say these things to prove what an advocate he is for them. And of course it wasn't received or it didn't land. Mm -hmm. And that's a different story. It didn't land. But the truth of the matter is they were just a brand new pair of beautiful Ralph Lauren pajamas that Teresa was like, oh my God, like, do you want these? And Louis was like, worse like that was going to be no no's like of course i would take that mm -hmm. and he doesn't wear them every night so he's worn them like twice right. <laughs> thank you for and this. i think it's cute think thank you for the backstory away. <laughs> you, know, away, you, you keep their t-shirt don't you you sleep That's in their t-shirt or something mm -hmm. you know you got, everyone's like trying to be such a hater with louie and like all i see is him trying to do the right thing yeah all That's you see all, is, I see him all you see is love with louie he really is like that all the time like if you met him You'd be like, oh my God, I hate it that people think this way about you. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we obviously meet some new housewives this season. Did you feel like there was more to Danielle's story about her brother or did you feel like people should just kind of leave it alone? No, I didn't think there was anything more to the story. And I was like, this is so wild to me that we have a new friend that's opening up to us, that's telling us how vulnerable she is because of her situation. And as friends, does that mean that we have to question everything that we say? I don't know what kind of friends you are, but my friends, when they come and they vent to me about something, I just listen. Mm -hmm. I listen, I hold their hand, I take their words for what it is. I don't sit there and think, well, well, what did you do? Mm -hmm. Or what did you do to me? I've never treated a friend that way. Yeah. And ultimately, obviously there was a slew of things that happened before she blocked them on Instagram. I don't know what any of that is. And maybe that's the reason people are thinking that there's more to a story. But I do think the catalyst, what broke the camel's back was her blocking him. And from what she has told me, and she's my friend, and I believe what she says, she said he was very angry. He blocked me on Instagram and he was like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to take you out of my wedding. And that's how she portrayed the story. I didn't get why everybody was investigating or everybody wanted, like, dude, we just met the girl and already you're interrogating her. Right. So I didn't buy any of that, Definitely. which is why you heard me say nothing. Because mm -hmm. I was basically the one saying, like, I don't understand. Like, our friend is telling us she's going through something. Why does it matter why? Why right. can't we just be a friend? Mm -hmm. No, totally. Do you still think Rachel Fuda had a terrible nose job? Yeah, I do. And I think I had a terrible nose job. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was trying to bond with her over that. I wasn't trying to make <laughs> fun of her. She outed my conversation and twisted it like I called her to talk about Dolores. That was not why. I called you literally to say, I'm sorry. Like, that's how it was. I was like, is that okay? Do you not want to talk about your nose job? Like, I know how it felt. 
when people were criticizing me. And if you don't want to talk about it, I won't touch it. She received that so wrong and she twisted it and turned it and turned it into something that it was not and made it seem like I was talking about Dolores. Like, dude, I like you, but I just met you five minutes ago and I'm not going to call you to talk about Dolores. Like, I'm not that stupid. Do, do, you, that, no. do you feel she like- She told me her. she never watched the show. I asked her, did you ever watch the show before after our nose job bonding, which is what I felt it was. I mean, I felt I was, listen, the show is about making friendships, right? I thought, hey, I got three new possible new friends that I can make. I just, I just wasn't aware that they had already chosen their team. Yeah. So uh, you and Rachel still kind of on the outside? Yeah. I mean, at this point in time, what you see is like, you know, we're not, we're not really speaking. No. Yeah. Which is, a, a, you know, I extended an olive branch to be her friend and then she took it and stabbed me in the back with it. How about you and Margaret? I mean, you know, that fight that the two of you had was one of the most intense fights we've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. insults and the back and forth that you guys had. I mean, she called you like a disheveled drug addict. Like it really Just went on. And on. Right. I mean, what was kind of your reaction to that one? And then do you do you even want to have any type of relationship with Margaret at this point? I mean, she was vicious. I was vicious back. I will say I give what I get. You know, she started with me. So mm -hmm. we saw how it all went down. And listen, we have reunion coming up. So hopefully that'll be a place for us to talk it out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, yeah. Jennifer, we are getting everybody's reaction to this. I'm sure you probably got asked about this, but the the story that's been rocking Bravo universe is the scandal. As mm -hmm. something that went through um, yeah. infidelity in their relationship. What is Team kind of Ariana. Team Ariana. Listen, I did not deal with any type of infidelity like that, honey. My husband may have cheated, but he is not a cheater. There is a big difference. Okay. And um, from what I'm seeing, I'm, 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 bothered by it. I'm very bothered. I'm very, very bothered. I just, I just can't believe it. I'm just, I feel betrayed. I feel, um, just like team Ariana all the way. Like I want to give her a hug and I just wish everybody all the best. Cause I'm sure it's not easy for all parties involved, even the ones, you know, committing the affair. Yeah. It can't be easy. No. It can't be easy. Just wish them all well that they get through it. But you know, team Ariana, if anybody asks, Seriously. All the way. All the way. Is there All even the another way. option? Like All you day, really every <laughs> day. No, 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 no. I mean, anybody, a woman who could do that behind their best friend's back for that long. I mean, for me, that just seems like a very insecure woman. That means that shows me a woman who's just so thirsty for love and attention, no matter where it comes from, that um, they're just willing to take it. And maybe that's like somebody's own issues that they got to deal with. Because I know for me, like I would never even entertain an idea like that like even if i was single i'd be like dude i'm too good honey i'm not a side piece i'm the main piece um but for somebody to do that like i just don't get it yeah i, I mean what do you it. think about them like possibly being together now too i mean i hope so right. if you're gonna do all of this like you, it better be love for if you're if you're doing all this and it's not love then it's not worth it and that's a damn shame yeah seriously great reason for being canceled in this <laughs> cancel culture we live in Okay, you can be canceled over anything these days. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky people like my lip liner. Otherwise, I'd be canceled for that. I do like your lip liner. I think it looks I great. I love it, honey. Monkey's <laughs> asshole never looks so good. <laughs> Jennifer, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Christina. Always right. a fun time. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.